Have you ever stopped to think about gravity? Really think about it? It's the most familiar thing in the universe. It's what keeps your feet planted firmly on the ground. It's the reason an apple falls from a tree, a moment of simple observation that supposedly sparked one of the greatest scientific revolutions in history. We live our entire lives under its constant, silent influence, never giving it a second thought. It's just there, an unquestionable fact of existence. We jump up, and we always come back down. It's predictable. It's reliable. But what if I told you that this everyday phenomenon is one of the most profound and mind-bending mysteries in all of science? What if the simple act of falling is a clue to a much deeper, stranger reality? This invisible pull governs everything, from the smallest grain of sand to the largest galaxy. It holds our planet together, it keeps the moon locked in its graceful orbit around the Earth, and it dictates the majestic dance of planets around our sun. Without it, the universe as we know it would simply fly apart into a cold, chaotic mess. There would be no stars, no planets, and certainly no us. Gravity is the master architect of the cosmos, shaping the structure of everything we see in the night sky. For hundreds of years, the world was perfectly happy with one explanation for gravity. This explanation came from a giant of science, Sir Isaac Newton. He imagined gravity as a universal force, a force of attraction that exists between any two objects with mass. The more massive the objects, the stronger the pull. The farther apart they are, the weaker the pull. It was a beautiful, elegant idea. It explained why planets orbit the sun and why we don't float off into space. Newton's laws of universal gravitation were a triumph. They allowed us to predict the motions of celestial bodies with incredible precision. Newton's vision of the universe was a giant cosmic clockwork. The sun, for example, pulls on the earth right now at this very moment, regardless of the 150 million kilometers of empty space between them. It was a kind of spooky action at a distance, a concept that even made Newton himself a little uncomfortable. How could the sun possibly know where the earth is in order to pull on it? If the sun were to suddenly vanish, poof, gone from existence, Newton's theory implied that the Earth would instantly fly off its orbit into the darkness of space. But in the early 20th century, a young patent clerk in Switzerland named Albert Einstein couldn't let go of this puzzle. Then, in 1907, an idea struck him. He later called it, the happiest thought of my life. It was about a person falling from the roof of a house. For that person, in the brief moments of their fall, the sensation of their own weight would vanish completely. If they were to drop an object from their hand, it would float right beside them. In that moment of freefall, gravity would seem to disappear. Imagine you are in an elevator, a sealed box with no windows. If the elevator is stationary on Earth, you feel your normal weight pushing you to the floor. Now imagine that same elevator is in deep space, far from any planet or star and it is being pulled upwards, accelerating at a constant rate. You would feel a force pushing you to the floor in exactly the same way. There is no experiment you could perform inside that box to tell the difference between being at rest in a gravitational field and being accelerated through empty space. Einstein proposed something revolutionary, something that sounds like it belongs in science fiction. He suggested that space is not just an empty, passive stage where events unfold. Instead, he said that space and time are connected. They form a single, dynamic entity, a four-dimensional fabric called space-time. He then made an even bolder claim. He said that this fabric of space-time is not flat. It can be bent, stretched, and warped. And what causes it to bend? Mass. Imagine a bowling ball placed in the middle of a large, stretched rubber sheet. The heavy ball creates a deep depression in the sheet. Now, if you roll a small marble nearby, it won't travel in a straight line. It will curve inwards, drawn into the dip created by the bowling ball. Einstein's theory really makes us rethink what we mean when we talk about a straight line. In the flat, Euclidean geometry most of us learned in school, a straight line is just the shortest distance between two points. According to general relativity, though, the universe isn't flat, it's curved. And when you're dealing with a curved surface, the rules totally change. Think about a long-haul flight from New York to Tokyo. If you look at the route on a flat map, it usually looks like this big arc that swoops up over Alaska. 
but that arc is actually the shortest possible distance, the geodesic, when you're traveling on the curved surface of the Earth. One of the wildest predictions of general relativity was that gravity should actually bend the path of light. In Einstein's universe, light has to travel through space-time just like everything else. And if that space-time is curved by a massive object, the path of the light will curve too. Einstein predicted that if starlight passes close to something massive like our sun, its path would bend. From Earth, the star would look like it's in a slightly different spot in the sky than it really is. This effect is called gravitational lensing. It was a bold, specific, and testable prediction. If scientists could see it, it would be powerful evidence that space really is curved. The stage was set for a dramatic test. In 1919, two British expeditions, led by the astronomer Sir Arthur Eddington, set out to test Einstein's prediction. One team traveled to Sobral, Brazil, and the other to the island of Principe, off the coast of West Africa. For a few precious minutes, the moon would block the brilliant face of the sun, plunging the day into darkness and allowing the stars near the sun's edge to become visible. When the eclipse finally happened, the teams worked frantically to capture images of the darkened sun and the surrounding stars. Back in England, the painstaking process of measuring the positions of the tiny star dots on the photographic plates began. The world waited. When the results were finally announced at a meeting of the Royal Society in London, they were a stunning confirmation of Einstein's theory. The starlight had indeed been bent, and by an amount that closely matched his prediction. Newton's universe had been overthrown. The news made headlines around the globe, and Albert Einstein became an overnight international celebrity. It was the moment humanity discovered that we live in a universe that is truly warped. Long before Einstein came along, Astronomers were puzzled by the behavior of the planet Mercury. It's the closest planet to the Sun, and it zips around our star faster than any other. According to Newton's laws, Mercury's orbit should be a perfect repeating ellipse. However, observations showed that it wasn't. The ellipse itself was slowly rotating over time, a phenomenon known as precession. This small error was minuscule, just 43 arc seconds of rotation per century. To put that in perspective, a full circle has 1,296,000 arc seconds, so this was an almost imperceptibly small deviation. For decades, scientists tried to explain it away. The most popular theory was that there must be an undiscovered planet, nicknamed Vulcan, orbiting even closer to the Sun. When Albert Einstein developed his theory of general relativity, he knew that Mercury's orbit would be the ultimate test. Einstein sat down and performed the complex calculations. In Einstein's universe, the Sun's immense mass creates a deep curve in the fabric of space-time, and this curvature is most intense close to the Sun. Mercury, being the innermost planet, travels through the most steeply curved region of space-time in our solar system. He didn't add any new planets or fudge any numbers. He simply used his theory of curved space-time and the known mass of the Sun. The result he got was a precession of 43 arc seconds per century. It was a perfect match. He later said that he was overcome with emotion when he saw the numbers, that his heart pounded in his chest. The strange wobble of Mercury was no longer a flaw in our understanding. It was powerful proof that gravity is not a force, but a feature of the curved, dynamic landscape of the cosmos. One of the most profound and mind-boggling predictions of Einstein's general relativity was the existence of gravitational waves. He envisioned them as ripples in the very fabric of space-time itself. When massive objects accelerate through space in a dramatic way, like two stars orbiting each other or two black holes colliding, they should create these gravitational waves, which would then travel across the cosmos at the speed of light. For nearly a century, this idea remained purely theoretical, by the time a gravitational wave from a distant cosmic collision reached Earth, the ripple in space-time would be minuscule, stretching and squeezing our planet by a distance smaller than the width of an atom. But a dedicated group of physicists believed it was possible, and they embarked on one of the most ambitious and sensitive experiments ever conceived. This experiment is called LIGO, the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory. Each detector is a giant L-shaped instrument with two arms, each four kilometers long. A powerful laser beam is split and sent down both arms. 
The beams bounce off mirrors at the ends and return to the starting point, where they are recombined. On September 14, 2015, after decades of work and refinement, LIGO detected its first signal. It was a faint chirp that lasted for less than a second, but it was unmistakable. The signal was a perfect match for the predicted waveform of two massive black holes, about 30 times the mass of our sun, spiraling into each other and merging in a distant galaxy over a billion years ago. The energy released in that final fraction of a second was more powerful than all the light from all the stars in the observable universe combined. All of it radiated away as gravitational waves. For the first time, we didn't just see the universe, we heard it. You might be thinking that this is all fascinating, but honestly, a bit abstract. It turns out it matters a great deal. Many of us use a practical application of Einstein's theory of relativity every single day without even realizing it. I'm talking about the Global Positioning System, or GPS. Your phone, your car's navigation, the systems that guide airplanes, they all rely on a network of satellites orbiting the Earth. The GPS network consists of dozens of satellites, each carrying an incredibly precise atomic clock. These satellites are in constant motion high above the Earth. According to Einstein's special relativity, because these satellites are moving so fast relative to us on the ground, their clocks should tick slightly slower than ours. But general relativity also comes into play. The satellites are in a region where Earth's gravity is weaker, where space-time is slightly flatter. When you combine these two relativistic effects, the net result is that the clocks on GPS satellites run faster than clocks on Earth by about 38 microseconds every single day. That might sound like an insignificant amount of time, but GPS works by measuring the time it takes for signals to travel from multiple satellites to your receiver. If the system didn't account for this 38 microsecond daily difference, the navigational errors would accumulate at a rate of about 10 kilometers every single day. So every time you use your phone to find the nearest coffee shop, you're relying on a system that has Einstein's equations for curved space-time built directly into its software. It's a constant global experiment, proving that Newton's old idea of gravity isn't enough. We need Einstein's more precise, more bizarre vision of a warped reality to make our modern technology function. Beyond the practical applications like GPS, understanding that we live in a universe of curved space-time fundamentally changes our perspective on everything. The Newtonian view gave us a clockwork universe, a predictable machine where we were cogs, pushed and pulled by forces on a static stage. Einstein's universe is far stranger, more dynamic, and arguably more beautiful. It's a universe where space and time are not a fixed backdrop, but are active participants in the cosmic dance. This new vision opens up a universe of incredible phenomena that Newton's laws could never have predicted. It gives us black holes, objects so massive that they curve space-time into a bottomless pit from which not even light can escape. It gives us gravitational lensing, where the gravity of a massive galaxy can act like a cosmic telescope, bending and magnifying the light from even more distant objects behind it. Knowing that space can be warped also forces us to be more humble about our own perceptions. Our everyday experience is of a flat, Euclidean world where straight lines are straight and time flows steadily for everyone. But that is just a local illusion. It's like the ant on the beach ball who thinks its world is flat because it can't perceive the larger curve. We live on a tiny planet, orbiting a modest star, in a quiet corner of a vast, dynamic and very weird universe. Our common sense is not a reliable guide to the true nature of reality. Science allows us to peek beyond these limitations and see the universe for what it truly is, a place far more wonderful and strange than we could have ever imagined. We have journeyed from a simple falling apple to the very edge of black holes, from a static clockwork universe to a dynamic rippling fabric of space-time. The story of gravity is a testament to the power of human curiosity. It shows how asking a simple question, what is this invisible pull, can unravel our entire perception of reality. We have seen how Isaac Newton gave us an elegant rule book, a universal law that described the cosmos as a predictable machine. But science never stands still. Albert Einstein, driven by a profound sense of unease with the idea of a ghostly force acting instantly across space, dared to propose something radical. 
He imagined a universe where gravity was not a force at all, but the very shape of reality itself. This journey is far from over. Today, physicists are still wrestling with the deep implications of Einstein's theory. We know that general relativity describes the world of the very large planets, stars, and galaxies with stunning precision. But it doesn't quite fit with our other great theory of nature, quantum mechanics, which governs the bizarre world of the very small. From the mystery of dark matter, the invisible substance that seems to provide the extra gravitational scaffolding for galaxies, to the puzzle of dark energy, the unknown force driving the accelerated expansion of space-time itself, we are surrounded by profound questions. The quest for a single theory of everything, a unified description that can encompass both the cosmic dance of galaxies and the quantum fuzz of subatomic particles, is the great unfinished adventure of modern physics. So the next time you drop your keys or watch the moon rise in the night sky, take a moment. Remember that you are not just witnessing a simple pull, you are experiencing the curvature of space-time, a whisper of the universe's grand geometric symphony. The adventure continues, and the cosmos is waiting for the next curious mind to ask, why? We are not just living in the universe, we are part of its very geometry.